final thing I want to look at here is for topics 6 and 7. I want to look at the cross price elasticity and the income elasticity. And in both of these cases here, for cross price elasticity, Um, what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the percentage change in the quantity demanded of good 2 for the percentage change in the price of good 1. For the income elasticity, here what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at the percentage change in the quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. Now, what's unique about these two types of elasticities is that whereas for price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply, we always knew the sign, right? Price elasticity of demand was always negative. Price elasticity of supply was always positive. Here, the sign of the elasticity is actually useful to us. It tells us something. Um, the magnitude just tells us how how much, uh, how how sensitive it is, um, how big the impact is. Um, what we'll see here is that the two products are complementary goods, if this is a negative number, and that they are substitute goods, if this number is positive. And um, then for the income elasticity of demand, that it's a normal good if it's positive, and that it's an inferior good if it's negative. Um, luxury goods, which we do have to kind of consider here, if it's a number that's greater than 1. So, um, now we just basically have another way to kind of think about how to calculate cross-price elasticities and income elasticities, another way to know whether they exist, and that would be by either calculating their cross-price elasticity or their income elasticity.